one. Woo! That same hermit that is here. We are walking through this place alone. I don't care if you've been married for 50 years, if you've been married three years, if you've been married or divorced five times, if you've never had a boyfriend or girlfriend, if you are surrounded with 17 different friends, 9,000 family, you are walking this world alone with nothing more than your thoughts. And those thoughts are an accumulation of negativity. Now certainly you have some beautiful thoughts. There's no doubt about it. You do have some beautiful thoughts. But they are only one through, if you want to say one through, or one through, or one through, um, let me tell you how you're going to get that positive thought. You know how you're going to get it? Here's how you're going to get it. Struggle and suffering. And how do you suffer? With your negative thoughts. That is the energy. That's the, um, mm, like the uh, manure. Let's do that word. Manure. That formulates that which is pure and good, not good, pure and chaste and virtuous, the Bible says. So we'll use those words. Let's see what Hermit is. I've never done him. He, he starts with an eight. I'm thinking he's a nine. The eight, five, there's a nine. Four, there's the nine. Two. So we got a 14. What's that Hermit here to do? Experience. Experience. Everything, everything, everything. The next time you get to something, you say, I should not do that. Go ahead and do it twice. 8, 9, 17, 21, 23. I believe that's that magical number, Mitzi. 3, 7 equals 1. It is the magic. I don't want to pull that page back yet. I'm not through with it. It's the magic portal. Paula, what are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about the hermit as your experience to enable you to move through this closed existence that you have. These ideas of everything you can see, feel, hear, and touch, and taste, and smell. Move to that which is beyond that that is generating your experience. Okay? That's what I'm talking about. And you can walk into that magical portal. But you're not going to do it without struggle and suffering. And that is the truth. Meaning you're not going to be doing all these shouts of glory to get that. Let's see what struggle is. Struggle. One, two, three, seven, seven, three, five. Okay, you know that, Mitzi. Eight, the heart of struggle, the heart of struggle is centered around death, the fear of, fear of, and insecurity associated, because we're all going to die. Sex and money. And I don't have to write any more words because you have a fear of that, but you're not going to get enough or you're not going to, you're going to lose what you got, and the same thing with money and the insecurity that is brought about whether you have a lot or a little. If you don't have none, you want more, and if you have a bunch, you're worried about somebody going to steal it. All of those negative thoughts. Food for the gods. What was the other one? Suffering. Suffering, 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 suffering. Suffering, suffering, suffering. You know what all that comes, all that suffering is that gossip you're doing and commenting. Making blanket statements, okay? Also, um, 
you know, needing to be right. It's really, really a positive thing to feel yourself wrong and not try to correct it. Let's see some of that suffering. One, three, six, six, five, nine. As if you could correct it anyway. But anyway, let's go on. Seven. Yeah, we got a seven there. What do we got? It's 17. The hit man. And who's, you know what a hit man is. People pay him to kill somebody. Well, that's what you're doing. You're absolutely annihilating yourself with all this negativity and with the need to be right and the need to gossip and comment and making these blanket statements and wanting, because here's where that control comes from. 7, 13, 22, 27, 34. Let's see. Let's make sure. 17, yeah. 7, 13, 22, 27, 34. You have a 51. Suffering is a 51. I think that I just said on those other pages that no matter who is walking with you or around you, or you are alone. You are here to experience. That's the only true teacher. Only true teacher is experience. In Kabbalah, in the middle of the tree of life is Tefereth and the Christ Center, if you would. And so you are never alone, as the song says, when you are connected with that which is in the center of you and not on the outside which you identify so much with. Let's see what center is. Three, five, five, two, five, nine. I've got a 10, and you can, an 8, 10, 19. 29. Let's make sure 10, 8, 10, 19. 29. The center of you, the center, the center point of you cries out all the time, cries out in the wilderness, if you will, cries out in the wilderness. To change directions. Let go. You're causing yourself so much misery. Let go. Let go of worry, concern. Okay? And letting go something you hold so dear. All right. Because if you don't, anyway, it's going to be ripped from you on many different levels, but we won't talk about that today. Let's see what we're going to do. We're going to go to this one. We already pulled one out of that one, so we'll pull one out of here. Something you hold so dear. <laughs> you got an idea about that? I bet you a million dollars on that lotto number. What do you hold so dear? As they got into the boat, the wind ceased. As, oh, Matthew 14, 32. As they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Now, you know the story. I, I mean, you probably know the story about the storm raging when Jesus was in the boat just before Peter attempted to walk on the water. He had too many ideas. It weighed him down. He went down. He had ideas of this world, of himself, of the fact that was water and he was a human body. Boom, he was down. As they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Now see, you are light. You're light of the world, Jesus said. You're light of the world. And if you're light, then you are encompassing a body. You're 
walking around in this body, encased in a body. And it's sort of like a tomb. And this light is in there, and it's generating. It's causing um, your brain to work and everything else that works. This uh, electromagnetic energy known as light. All right, it's in this, this tomb, if you will. This, that's a good thing. It's in this boat. It's in this boat. We came down here and we got in this boat of mortal flesh. The only problem is we think we have some control. And we didn't release the idea of that. But it says here, as they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Ceased. So if the wind ceased and stopped blowing, that which they were fearful of was no longer there. So pretty much what happened was they surrendered. And that's what the whole key idea of learning that your negative thoughts are the soul that you'll have to toil to get underneath to that which will liberate you. But you've got to stop some of that gossiping along the way. Because that just entrenches it. Let's see, five, four, good gracious, look at all these fives and fours and nines. All right, let's see if I got them all right. Eight, 13. Did we talk about that? To surrender is to die. Before I go on, let me make this perfectly clear. Whether it takes five years, a hundred years, or three days, sometime in this life, you will come to the realization, and it's a stark one too, you cannot take you where you are going. You cannot take you where you're going. You have to die. Jesus said it so adequately when he said, you must be born again. You cannot take what you are and go into the next realm if that's a second from now. As long as you are holding on to what you believe yourself to be. Because when you walk into the second, you have carried you. So it's the same experience. It's the same existence. It's the same deal. For real. Okay, let's see. You got to surrender. You got to die. 10, 19, 24, 28, 37. Surrender. 10 times surrender to the experience of life without your interpretation of it, without your, how about this word? Without your demands. How many things are you demanding from the people around you? And expectations. What do you expect? Get honest, what do you expect? Hmm? You get a new dress and you put it on that looks good, you expect somebody to tell you it does. If it don't, it's going to ruin your day. Ten times are you to surrender. Ten times you are to let go of what you hold so dear. What do you hold so dear? Did anybody see that? This is what you hold so dear. This is what you hold so dear. Four, five, four, one, five, four, one. Seven. <laughs> you know, Jesus said, be up and about thy father's business. Demands, the heart of the demands is seven. It's God's number. Calling forth that which is inside of you, which is free and unloosed from everything that you're trying to do and be and get in this life. To do, be, and get. Okay? Let go of. 
to do, to be, to get. To do, to be, to get. To do, to be, to get. Okay, let's see. Demands. 8, 13, 17. All right, let's see. 8, 13, 17. We got a 24 here. 24, always, 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 always represents music. It also represents food. But the problem with that is, even in music and food, this goes back to that demands deal again. See, God has demands and commands. Whatever you have and how you interpret God. And those commands and demands and entitlements are something far removed from what you even think that you're trying to get. But it really is the only thing that's going to bring you lasting peace. But you've got to suffer enough to get to that. But anyway, getting back to this music and food. 24, always. That's just two little things that 24 means. But it always means music. And it always means food. Always, 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 always. It also means comfort. Okay? But the thing is, and that's, do you think I'm trying to tell you not to engage in music? Oh, no, honey. No, no, no. All of us are musicians at heart. We're cosmic musicians and divine artists. So music is the generating force in us. Am I telling you to eat certain foods and stay away from certain foods? No, no, no. Because what is the name of this game? Experience. Experience. All things. Okay? And comfort. Am I also saying that you're not supposed to be comfortable while you're here in this life? No. What makes you comfortable? You know, I have ideas and thoughts and sensations and actions and gestures that make me comfortable. What, make you, what makes you comfortable? What makes you comfortable? I'm not saying any of those things because I want you to have as much music as you can have and as much food as you can have. You know, comfort might be sex. Comfort might be relationships. Comfort might be religion. Comfort might be education. Comfort might be money. I don't know what your comfort is. Don't know what the level is.